YouTube Christian apologist Max, otherwise known as Maximus MCC on his channel, has created a video to discuss something known as vestigial parts. Vestigial parts in biological organisms are those features, and these can be anatomical structures, behaviors, and biochemical pathways, which have lost all or most of their original function in a species through evolution. What our friend Max wants to know is, do vestigial parts really exist, and how do we identify them? But he also wants to know something extremely odd. He wants to know if a vestigial part has ever been observed being completely eliminated from an organism that carried around that vestigial part. Beginning his examination of these questions, he examples Darwin's observation of the ostrich. Darwin mentions ostrich wings in his book, Origin of the Species, that they are a vestige part which serves little or no purpose. He then goes on to explain in laws of variation. As the larger ground feeding birds seldom take flight except to escape danger, I believe that nearly wingless conditions of several birds which now inhabit or have lately inhabited several oceanic islands tenanted by no beast of prey has been caused by disuse. The ostrich indeed inhibits continents and is exposed to danger from which it cannot escape by flight. But by kicking, it can defend itself from enemies, as well as any of the smaller quadrupeds. We may imagine that the early progenitor of the ostrich had habits like those of a bustard, and that as natural selection increased in successive generations, the size and weight of its body, its legs were used more, and its wings less until they became incapable of flight. Interesting that Darwin assumes that all wings are good for is flight. I'm not sure why Max is claiming that Darwin, from the passage he reproduced, is assuming that all wings are good for is flight. That is nowhere suggested in the passage. Indeed, the only thing Darwin is observing is that the wings these birds do have are themselves useless for flight. He made no indication that they were therefore useless for other purposes. He then goes on to fantasize how the wings became useless according to his natural selection that he is trying to sell the public and indeed did do a fantastic job. No, Max. Darwin wasn't... <coughs> oh, I I'm sorry. No, Max. Darwin wasn't fantasizing. He was creating a hypothesis. That's what scientists do. They are not like creationists who fantasize about things like humans living alongside dinosaurs and giant wooden boats. However, if he would have just thought on the subject a little further before coming to an erroneous conclusion, it might have saved him some intellectual embarrassment. Ooh, sorry Max, but the embarrassment is yours. You're going to go on now to describe various uses for the ostrich wing other than for flight, but you're attacking a straw man. No word to Darwin or any other evolutionist suggest that ostrich wings are completely and utterly useless, like a five and a quarter inch floppy drive in an iMac. Nice try, though, but let's look at what a real scientist has to say on the subject. This is long, so hang on. The wings of the ostrich are a vestigial trait, a feature of a species that was an adaptation in its ancestors, but that has either lost its usefulness completely or as in the ostrich, has been co-opted for new uses. Like all flightless birds, ostriches are descended from flying ancestors. We know this from both fossil evidence and from the pattern of ancestry that flightless birds carry in their DNA. But the wings, though still present, can no longer help the birds take flight to forage or escape predators. Yet the wings are not useless. They've evolved new functions. They help the bird maintain balance, mate, and threaten its enemies. All flightless birds have wings. In some, like the kiwi, the wings are so small, only a few inches long and buried beneath their feathers, that they don't seem to have any function. They're just remnants. In other words, as we saw with the ostrich, the wings have new uses. In penguins, the ancestral wings have evolved into flippers, 
allowing the bird to swim underwater with amazing speed, yet they all have exactly the same bones that we see in the wings of species that can fly. That's because the wings of flightless birds weren't the product of deliberate design. Why would a creator use exactly the same bones in flying and flightless wings, including the wings of swimming penguins, but of evolution from flying ancestors? Opponents of evolution always raise the same argument when vestigial traits are cited as evidence for evolution. Quote, the features are not useless, they say. They are either useful for something, or we haven't yet discovered what they're for. They claim, in other words, that a trait can't be vestigial if it still has a function, or a function yet to be found. But this rejoinder misses the point. Evolutionary theory doesn't say that vestigial characters have no function. A trait can be vestigial and functional at the same time. It is vestigial not because it's functionless, but because it no longer performs the function for which it evolved. The wings of an ostrich are useful, but that doesn't mean that they tell us nothing about evolution. Wouldn't it be odd if a creator helped an ostrich balance itself by giving it appendages that just happen to look exactly like reduced wings and which are constructed in exactly the same way as wings used for flying. Indeed, we expect that ancestral features will evolve new uses. That's just what happens when evolution builds new traits from old ones. Darwin himself noted that, quote, an organ rendered during changed habits of life useless or injurious for one purpose might easily be modified and used for another purpose. So, you see, Max, you're wrong. Darwin never claimed that wings could only be used for flight. Vestigial doesn't equate to total uselessness. The following is an article from an evolutionist website called talkorigins.org. They are still referring to ostrich wings as vestige. And now perhaps you understand why. You want an example of a real weird vestigial? Goosebumps. Yeah, goosebumps. You know, those little bumps you get on your skin when you get frightened or cold. Now what the heck are those for? Any ideas? Any guess as to why an intelligent designer or a god would give human beings the ability to make little useless bumps on their arms and legs? Seems like those things could be useful if they had more than mere peach fuzz to work with, huh? Do you think perhaps evolution might have a clue? Nah, evolutionists. They're idiots, right? As you said. If you really think and think hard, you will find a use for what these sci-fi writers of evolution call vestige parts. Thank you. Oh, no, sir. Thank you.